Hello, this RDM Byte will provide a short introduction to the concepts of equity, diversity, inclusion and justice, EDIJ, in the context of data management. Within this video, we will cover five main learning objectives. By the end of this video, you will be able to define equity, diversity, inclusion and justice and decolonisation. Explain how these concepts apply to data management. Explain the difference between available data and accessible data. Define the fair and care principles for data management. And apply the concepts covered to your own biosciences subfield. So, what is EDIJ? Like we have already said, this stands for Equity, Diversity, Inclusion and Justice. You have probably heard these terms in relation to teaching or employment, but perhaps not in relation to data management, which is how we will be applying them. Equity encompasses the removal of barriers, which enables access on a level playing field for everyone. So for example, this could be something like reasonable adjustments for disabled employees. Diversity means accounting for individuals' identities and celebrating the differences between people to enable participation by everyone. So this might include things like celebrating a variety of religious festivals or serving cuisine from a range of different cultures in the workplace canteen. Inclusion is centred on building a welcoming environment for everyone, which allows people to feel included. An example of this could be changing documentation around parental leave policies to gender neutral terminology. Justice is about rectifying past harms, exclusion and discrimination against marginalised groups in society, which might mean things like paying reparations for funds obtained via links to slavery in the past. Together, these concepts form the basis for EDIJ work. We also used the term decolonisation earlier. This is a somewhat less defined concept, but broadly is defined as reframing, thinking and redesigning frameworks and systems to remove systemic impacts of colonialism and imperialism from society. The UN states that self-determination is a key aspect of decolonisation work. Decolonisation is often more closely associated to the arts and humanities than the sciences, but the need to incorporate these processes into science teaching and scientific research is becoming increasingly clear. An example of decolonisation could be redesigning a teaching module to include work by historically excluded researchers or research which uses so-called non-Western methodologies. When we think about EDIJ and decolonisation, there are a few key questions which apply broadly across all data types, although there will be more specific concerns within each individual subfield. These questions include, could this data cause harm to anyone? It is important to consider this as a broad question and think about any impacts on future generations arising from the data being collected or used. Who benefits from this data? How do they benefit? If the data is providing no meaningful benefits, it would not be ethically justified to collect it in the first place. Who owns the data? Are they being appropriately credited or acknowledged? Are all contributors being credited for their contributions, including non-researchers? Have any impacted groups been properly consulted and asked for their input on the data being used? Have they given informed consent for the use of the data if it involves them or their local environment? Who should have access to this data? Do they have the access they require? Is the data being shared in a way where barriers to access are being mitigated against? Was the collection process for this data ethical? This applies to data you collect yourself and to data collected by others including, perhaps especially, historically collected data which may not have had the same ethical scrutiny we usually expect to see today. Have any assumptions or exclusions in the collection, processing or analysis stages introduced bias into the results in unanticipated ways? 
We have mentioned accessibility a few times now, and it is important to reiterate that accessibility and availability of data are not the same thing. Data can be theoretically available without being accessible. Douglas Adams articulated this well in A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. When the plans for Arthur Dent's house to be demolished to build a new highway are made available, they are located in a dark cellar with no stairs, placed in the bottom of a locked filing cabinet, stuck in a disused lavatory with a sign on the door saying, Beware of the Leopard. Arthur theoretically had access to the plans, they were available, but in reality could not view them without surmounting significant difficulties and obstacles. They were not accessible. Barriers to access can include a huge range of things, but some common ones to consider are Knowledge and skills available Geographical and political barriers Disabilities Hardware and software Financial barriers Issues around data formatting, definitions and documentation you will have heard of the FAIR principles in other resources, no doubt. If not, please do look further into them. Briefly, they are centred on sharing data in an open access way by making it findable, accessible, interoperable and re reproducible. However, a much less publicised set of principles have been established by the Research Data Alliance International Indigenous Data Sovereignty Interest Group at a meeting in Botswana in 2018. The meeting was led by Indigenous groups and sought to improve data governance by Indigenous people. They established the four principles of collective benefit, authority to control, responsibility and ethics. An important thing to bear in mind here is that the care principles mean that open access sharing of data is not always the best choice. Some data simply cannot be shared ethically in an open access way. When we think about EDIJ and decolonisation, there are additional considerations above those of open access sharing. We need to ask questions about the collection process and its ethics, whether appropriate consent was sought and given, and any potential harms which the data may cause. Ownership and sovereignty of data are key to the care principles we discussed, and we also need to think about any assumptions which might have introduced unintended bias into the data. Additionally, open access can be harmful in some circumstances. Data dealing with sensitive topics or health may be best kept private, as would any data which is potentially identifiable. Anonymization cannot always present, prevent this due to the types of variables being recorded. Biased or exploitative data is also not usually able to be openly shared in an ethical way, and reuse of such data would not be best practice from multiple perspectives, but we are considering the human side of these for today. We will finish this video with a task. Can you apply these ideas of EDIJ and decolonization to your subfield of research? If you consider the data you deal with daily, think about how accessible it is for a disabled people. Where is your data sourced from geographically and culturally? Consider who might not be able to access the data and who is impacted by it. Do the two groups overlap? How might you resolve any issues you can see arising from considering your answers to these questions? That's the end of this video. Follow-up videos on these topics are available as RDM Bytes if you'd like to learn more.